Hi, Claude Whitaker here. I'm a, a speaker, a sales trainer. I speak to groups of salespeople and business owners across the country. I also read a lot of books on selling. Okay, and I've wrote, written a lot of books on selling too. One of my favorite books on selling is on cold calling. It's called Cold Calling Techniques That Really Work. It's the seventh edition. It's written by Stephen Schiffman. It is really one of my favorite books. I've got over 2,000 books on sales and selling and psychology and how white people buy and marketing and things like that. Okay, this really is one of my favorite books. Certainly my, my favorite book on, on exactly the method of cold calling that, uh, that Mr. Schiffman teaches. All right. I'll tell you how good this book is. Um, I've been selling now for 40 years and I've been doing cold calls for most of that time. And when I got this book, which is the seventh edition, uh, there were, uh, was an approach in there that I started using. I changed what I was doing a little bit, started using this approach. There was a couple of ideas in here that I started using and, and made my prospecting better. And I was doing a good job of prospecting at the time and I learned how to do it better from a couple of things I learned in this book. So you really can get good information by reading books by other authors outside of your core industry. That's a really good idea. Tip from me to you. All right. Well, one of the things, one of the many things I get out of cold calling techniques that really work uh, is an example that he gave, uh, Mr. Schiffman gave about uh, a child uh, asking for a, a cookie, I think it was. Uh, he was asking for a cookie and the the mother says, no, 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 you don't need a cookie. And he says, well, but I want a cookie. And she says, well, you know, it's not fair because if I give you a cookie, it's going to spoil lunch. And he goes, I, I want a cookie. And she goes, yeah, but your brother, if I give you a cookie, I got to give one to your brother and he's not here and it's not fair. And so she keeps giving reasons why he shouldn't have a cookie. He keeps giving her not reasons, just saying, I want a cookie. Eventually, of course, she gives him the cookie. It reminded me of Years and years ago, I used to, I was in a uh, I think it was a, a it was a retail store of some sort of big department store, and this actually happened to me. I mean, I wasn't the little kid and I wasn't the parent, but I was listening to it. Another parent and another look and a, and a little kid. And what was happening was the little boy he was about five years old. He wanted a toy. I don't remember what toy it was. It was an action figure, I think. And she said, uh, "No, you don't need that that toy." You know, and he goes, "But I want the toy." And she says, well, no, it's not fair. You know, I get you a toy because your brother and sister, I didn't get them a toy and you're here with me and I shouldn't, you know, I don't have to get them one. And he goes, I want a toy. And this went back and forth. Now it sounds, this is going to sound like it took an hour, but really it took about a minute for this whole thing, this whole drama to, to, to happen. And, uh, and I, I was wondering, is she going to get him the toy? And I, I figured she probably would because he was relentless. Well, how does this apply to selling? Okay. Well, when you're cold calling and you are talking to a prospect and they give you an objection or a stall and they'll say, well, you know, now is not a really good time. Why don't you call me next month? Or, you know, right now we're really busy or, uh, you know, our, our, we don't have the budget for that right now or I'm using another supplier. I mean, there's all kinds of things that they'll say. Here's the truth of all of those things. They're reflexes. Okay. When he says, well, right now we're using another supplier. That's what he told, told the last 10 guys that called. You know, right now is not a good time. That's what he told the last 10 guys that called. It's not, it's not specific to your offer. He's not genuinely, the, the, the business owner is not genuinely thinking about your position and your offer and thinking, no, you know, right now I've just done an analysis in my brain and uh, you should come back in December. That's not what he's saying. He's saying, I don't want to talk to you. I'm, you interrupted me. I'm busy doing something else. I'm just not interested in what you have. So when you're answering objections with logic and reason and, and answering objections as though they're real, the reason that that doesn't work when you're cold calling, in fact, the reason that that doesn't work as well when you're selling is because a lot of these objections are not real. They're reflexes. Okay. Well, here's what he told, he says in the book, and I used this and it worked dramatically. And I almost kicked myself because I thought, you know, for 30 years, I didn't do this. Why didn't I do this before? And here's what it was. You know, you're calling and you say, I'd like to see you tomorrow at three o'clock. I have an idea. I think you'll, uh, you'll get something out of it. And he says, well, you know, right now is not a good time. Why don't you call back in December? Oh, okay. So you're, you're busy. Yeah, I'm really busy. Okay. Well, it sounds like you and I should talk. How about tomorrow at three o'clock? Well, you know, I'd have to talk to my wife. Well, how about tomorrow? Okay. That sounds good. How about we will do that tomorrow about three o'clock. How's that sound? And you just keep going back to that over and over and over again. Don't try to overcome each individual objection. Why? Because they're not real. And the reason it doesn't help when you overcome these objections to, to, to seeing you is because you overcome the objection. It doesn't matter. Pre think about this for a minute. You're a guy, whether you're a guy or not. Imagine for a second, you're a guy 
and you have, you're a teenager and you ask this girl out for a date and she said, you know, what are you doing Friday night? Oh, Friday night I'm washing my hair. Well, what does that mean? <laughs> Is she really washing her hair? Maybe. So if you're the typical salesman, you know what you're going to try to do? You're going to try to justify, you're going to overcome the objection of her washing her hair. You're going to say, well, could you wash it faster? Well, why don't we do this? Why don't you wash your hair at seven and then we could go out at eight? Well, it takes a while for it to dry. Why don't you use another dryer? I know this brand of dryer that you could use to get to speed this process along. Okay, and you're, uh, you're answering objections. You're using, trying to use logic because you're pretending like these are real objections about her washing her hair. And really, she just doesn't want to go out with you. Okay, washing her hair is what she told the last 10 guys that asked her out that she didn't want to go out with. She's going to wash her hair on Friday night. Okay, if you keep talking about hair, you're never going to get anywhere. All right, so that's why answering objections for an appointment with, you know, pretending like they're real objections, just keep going over and over the uh, answering the objections uh, with different answers that use logic. That's why that doesn't work because they're not really objections. Okay, they're just stalls. They, the people just start kind of, you know, not now, they're kind of, there's a wall up there. But what you want to do is do like the child did when he wanted the toy or what the child did when he wanted the cookie. You just say, I understand. It sounds like we should get together. How about tomorrow at three? And you know what? If you do that often enough, one of two things is going to happen. Either the person on the other end of the line is going to start backing off from you because they're just really not interested and it's becoming very mildly irritating to them. And they'll say, uh, they'll start getting, sh you'll get shorter answers. Uh, they'll stop sounding quite as, their voice will be not quite as soft or friendly. And you know now that once they start to move away from you, they don't come back. By the way, that's a good thing to know in selling. Once they're moving away from you emotionally, it's really hard to get them to come back. In fact, it's almost impossible. So I let people go. When they're starting to move away from me, I'll let them go. But if they're starting to come towards me, I'm, not, I'm talking metaphorically, of course, you're on the phone. If they're starting to come towards me, like I say something and they start maybe laughing a little bit or sounding a little bit more friendlier, or they, they start uh, hesitating longer before saying, well, now's not a good time. Um, I know that they're eventually just going to say, okay, you know. And the question is this, what are they thinking, you know, when you're doing that? Because I know I'm a salesman. I know how salesmen think. And if you're on the phone and you talk to somebody and, and you know, you're, you keep going, well, how about tomorrow at three? And you do that seven or eight or nine times. You're, you know, if you're a human being, you're going to be wondering, well, doesn't that irritate them? A little, yeah. You know who it irritates? The people that don't say yes. The people that don't see you. It irritates them just a little bit, all right? You know who it doesn't irritate? The people that see you. It doesn't irritate them at all, okay? Why? <laughs> because now they want to see you, all right? Now they're going, oh, okay, well, come on in tomorrow, at 10, you know, 10 o'clock or tomorrow at 3 o'clock or whatever the time was that you were talking about. That's, a, okay, yeah, come on in. Now, they're not thinking anything bad about you at all, okay? In fact, here's what they're thinking about you. I know because I'm a business owner and I get these calls. Here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking, that guy's really got his stuff together. That guy's a player. That guy really wants the business. I wish I had more guys like him on my team. Okay, I got to meet that guy. That guy really wants the business. Okay, he's aggressive. He's, uh, he's ambitious. That's who I want to talk to. That's the kind of people I want to do business with. People that are going somewhere in their careers. Okay, there's a lot in this book, book folks. I got to tell you, Cold Calling Techniques That Really Work. Get the 7th edition. You can get the 1st edition. I'm sure there are other editions because there's the 7th edition. I have the 1st edition. I have this one. The only reason I suggest this one is because there's a lot in it about social selling and about uh, using technology and emailing and voicemail and things like that. It, of course, wasn't in the first book. Uh, I know the first book was written a long time ago because the pages are yellow. That's how I know that. So get this book. Really, I suggest it. Thanks a lot.